YouTube and welcome to my channel, Foam and Lizards. This is my first video ever and I made a background for my tarantula daisy. I decided I would film everything so I could show it to you how I build it and explain you the pros and cons and the mistakes I made. So you could learn something from it I guess. So, well, here it is. So, this is it. It has two caves in it. The one on the right, it is the warm cave because it has a heat mat beneath it. It has a cave on the left, behind the plant. It has two entrances. I call it the cold cave because it has no heat pad beneath it. Um, it has an entrance on top and on the bottom you can see it, it's in the dark. It has two plateaus, one on the left and one at the back. It has a basking spot. I know tarantulas don't use it but yeah, whatever. And it has a logo, my own logo. I made it myself. So. Yeah, and there's a spider in it, but I guess you can't really see it. Yeah, it's over there. It's Daisy. I will show you a better picture from her. So, without further ado, I'm gonna show you how to build it. But first, I promise to show you Daisy. Well, here she is. Isn't she beautiful? <coughs> Daisy is the Mexican Red Knee, also known as the Brachypelma Smithy. She's the first animal I bought in years and I finally decided to upgrade her terrarium. So I did that. Anyway, because she already lived in a terrarium and I didn't want to unnecessarily disturb her, I built a background in another terrarium. This terrarium is a little higher than the one I was going to use, so I had to take that into account. Her terrarium is 17 by 17 by 11 inch. When I build something, I do that in stages. This build counted 5 of them. The first is design, the second is foam, the third is grout, the fourth is paint, and the fifth is the dry process. So, let's start with design, otherwise my words would be useless I guess. Oh well, I just got some pen and paper and started drawing. I knew I wanted some case for my tarantula to hide in and some plateaus to add more depth to the build. I also knew that it would never fit in one piece, so I decided how many parts it had to become. This was not what the final build would look like, but it gave me a pretty good idea on how to begin. Also, I worked really really hard on this drawing, so please don't laugh at me. Now that the first stage was finished, I got to play with the foam. First I need a place for the sides and back so I could build up against it. I measured the scale on the foam and placed some dots. With the ruler I created straight lines and after that I used a knife to carve it out. Also, if you do this at home and you care anything about your floor, use a workbench of some sort because yeah, this is not good for your floor man, but I just don't care. At all. Anyway, now that's out of the way, I started with the first cave. First I drew the inside of the cave on the phone. I had to make sure my tarantula would fit in and I knew that the grout would make it smaller. After that, I drew the outside of the cave. I really didn't have anything in mind so I just experimented. With a hot wire foam cutter I cut it out, but the knife would work too. Because this frame was totally out of picture, I'll show you a satisfying close up. The next step would be to duplicate the piece of foam. I laid it on another piece and marked the outside four times. After that, I carved them out. I used two picks to hold them together and laid them in my terrarium to see how it looked. Perfect. I made a circle where the entrance of the cave should be and again made sure it would be big enough after I covered it with grout. Now that's finished, let's go to the working bench! So, here we are. If you wonder what this is, it's a soldering gun with copper wire. When activated, it gets really hot and you can make some pretty cool looking rock texture. When you build something with foam, you can always see the individual layers. With this technique, you can get rid of the unnatural edges. I just bought the cheapest soldering gun and tried it out. Just scrape the wire over the foam and let the heat do the rest. You can see how the layers almost melt together. After grouting, it becomes one big part. Now it's time to carve out the inside of the cave. When I finished the first one, I laid it on top of the next and marked it. This way, I knew they would all be the same size. I left the top closed, mainly because it was already big enough for Daisy to hide in, but also because I'm a bit lazy. 
After that, I glued the pieces together with some non-toxic glue. I skipped the parts where the entrance would be so the glue would not stick to the knife. With toothpicks, I made sure the foam would never move again. Seriously, toothpicks are your best friends when building. Anyway, I tried to carve out the entrance with a knife, but I found out that the foam was a bit too weak and it would break fast. So I used my fingers. I still had to be careful not to remove too much of the foam, but it worked out well in the end. With this lighter, I burned away the loose parts to smooth it out. When that was done, my first cave was finished. I made the second cave the same way as I did the first one. This time, I carved the top open so I could add another entrance later. Next, I started with the first plateau. I put both caves upside down on a new piece of foam and marked it. After cutting it out, I carved a hole in it so the top cave could connect. For some extra depth, I added another piece of styrofoam in the right corner. I carved it until it looked like one piece. At this point, I still wasn't very happy how it looked. I wanted it to be more natural. So I added another piece of foam, but this time, I cut it in half so not all layers would be the same size. I began to realize that the caves and plateau together would not fit after I grouted it. I had to make it smaller, or I just throw the left side away. Bye! Anyway, for now, the first plateau was done and I decided to start with a top cave. Well, this is where I made the first mistake. After I carved out four pieces of the same size, I decided to build it up like a stair. Like I said before, I am very lazy. So instead of carving them out again, I used the ones I had. Because of this, I had a lot of space at the left side which I had to fix later. With the top of this cave, I wanted to try something new. I just drew some random lines on it like you see here. With the soldering gun, I went from the top to the bottom of the piece. I realized it gave some pretty awesome effect. I also did this with the rest of the cave. With this engraving marker, I made some stone texture on the top. I didn't know how it would turn out after 3 layers of grout, but hey, that's where this channel is for. Also, science! When the top was done, I made a big crack at the side for some extra detail. After I made the 3 bottom plates hollow, carved out the entrance and glued it all together, it turned out to be what I call a pretty nice cave. Now, it's time to fix the first mistake. Because I threw away the left wall, I had a big open space. But I wanted a second plateau on that side anyway, so I could use it to close it off. I just made a rock like piece of foam and multiplied it with some magic. Because I was so good at it, I did it again and after that I carved out the plateau itself. Back at the working bench, you see me gluing 3 pieces on top of the plateau. I forgot to film when I made them, but hey, here they are. Anyway, after gluing everything together, I got something like this. Now. I went nuts again with the soldering gun until I got a fake rock texture. Eventually I ended up with this. It still looks like a complete mess, but I promise it would look much better after the grouting stage. It was time for my favorite part of the build, the logo. Like I said before, I designed this logo myself years ago and I even got it tattooed on my arm. I built this in the following steps. First I made it on the computer and printed it out. Second. I cut it out with some scissors and laid it on the foam. With some tape, I made sure it could not move. Third, I used the marker to draw the lines. Last, I used the foam cutter and cut the foam around it until I got the proper size. I used the engraving marker to outline the logo. I did this so when I used the soldering gun to create the rock effect, I could not screw up the drawing. After messing with the copper wire, I ended up with something I was very happy about. Now that the logo was finished, I could continue with the next step. This would be the back and the side wall. Because I wanted some fake rock texture, I marked where the caves and the plateaus would cross. I drew some rocks on a new piece of foam and carved them out. I figured where I wanted them to go and started gluing them on. Now it was time to give those ugly pieces of foam some texture. At this point, I didn't know how to do this exactly, so I started experimenting. You see me using a lighter and a knife, but in the end, my fingers did the trick. When this was complete, I used the lighter to smooth it out. I also tried to use the engraving marker, but I found out that that was not working the way I wanted. It still looked like a mess to me, so I had to think of something that would fix it. I decided I would fill up the open spaces with some small pieces of foam. 
I scraped my nails over the foam until I had enough. It looks easier than it really is because when I was done my working space was covered with snow. The next step was to glue them on. This was a really frustrating job because the pieces of foam were static and got stuck on everything. Anyway, first I put the glue between the fake rocks and after that I spread it with a cheap brush. I sprinkled the pieces of foam over the board and pushed them in with the back of a knife. In the end, it was the most ugly thing I had ever seen. In fact, it was so ugly that I wanted to do something else for the right wall. Instead of scraping the foam into small pieces, I broke them off. With this, I filled the open spaces between the rocks and glued them down. Ah, much better. But still ugly. I was almost done with the foam. I just had to give it the finishing touch. With broken pieces of foam, I created some more rocks on the plateau. I used my fingers to shape the side of it so it had a more natural look. And finally, I could continue to the next stage. The grouting stage. Because it is a more dry terrarium, it didn't matter what kind of grout I used. But I had some future projects in mind where I needed some quality grout, so I bought and used that. I covered all the pieces with a more watery layer and left it to dry for a day. For this stage, I made sure no foam was visible anymore. Because I made the grout very thin, it could make its way into even the smallest holes. I added some black paint to the second layer so it became more greyish. I also made the grout thicker. Again, I covered every side of every piece and left them to dry for 24 hours. The third layer was basically the same as the second layer, but this time I only covered the visible parts. Now, I left it to dry for two days and finally the grouting stage was finished. I have to add that if you are going to grout something yourself, you really need to be patient and leave it to dry fully. If you add another layer while the last one is still wet, the grout can crack in the future and you don't want that. I arrived at stage 4. Painting. There was something that I wanted to try when I started this project. I bought a sprinkler and mixed in some black paint and water. I sprayed every piece from a distance so not everything would be covered. Then I waited a day to see what it would do. The grout sucked up the paint and it gave a very neat rock effect as you can see here. Next time I will do this with more colors to add more variation. I had come to the final step before the drying process. The background was almost finished but I needed some more depth. Every painter knows that the secret lies within dry brushing. First I used some bone white color and covered the whole background. If you do this, make sure you don't have a lot of paint on the brush. It's better that you have almost nothing at the brush than too much. With this technique the edges will be highlighted and the rocks become more natural. I will show you what it does. This is before I dry brushed it. And this is after. After the white color I repeated the process with some green paint. I wanted the build to have a more forest feeling. I skipped a lot of space for I did not want the green to cover all the white. When that was finished, I let it dry for two weeks and after that, Daisy could finally enjoy her new home. <laughs> and we're done! I hope you guys learned something today. If you have any questions or tips, please leave them in the comment section down below. If you like this video, do give it a thumbs up and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!